On to the Big East Conference Tournament. Looking at the odds board over at thelines.com and per BetMGM Sportsbook, UConn, a heavier favorite than Houston to win the, actually tied for the same odds to win their respective conference tournaments. Huskies are priced at minus 165, plus 475 in that range to win the national championship. You could price shop over at thelines.com. Creighton plus 375, Marquette plus 650, I don't think I've seen anything new on Tyler Kolek's oblique injury, whether he's going to play or not. You would expect no, but that's just my hunch. St. John's plus 1,200. Villanova plus 1,200. Seton Hall 40 to 1. Providence 80 to 1. What stands out to you, Eric, on the surface? Well, one of them, Creighton, first of all, is one of my futures. I like Creighton a lot. Again, the depth issue is is something that bothers me, but they do have the fingerprint of a national champion with the top 10 offensive efficiency, top 35 defensive efficiency. On top of that, you mentioned the Kolick injury. You, you wonder if Shaka Smart, who has not exactly had the most luck in the NCAA tournament since the VCU run, is starting to a little bit of pressure and saying, do I really want to put all my eggs into a Big East tournament basket when the NCAA tournament is knocking? Do you really want to have Tyler Kolick 100% healthy for the NCAA tournament, knowing full well that Marquette probably doesn't have a lot to gain here in the Big East tournament. So um, so that would probably bode well for Creighton, considering they match up with number three Marquette in the semifinals. Um, on the other side, obviously, UConn just looks like that dominant train that they had a year ago. I don't like the what I can't say I don't like, but um, you, you know, the thing I loved last year about UConn is not only did they have shooters. But you had that two-headed monster on the inside with Sonogo and um, and Klingon. Now, obviously, Klingon's still there, and you're playing with Samson Johnson. Not exactly the same one-two punch, um, but still, it's really hard to bet against UConn. The one th- I mean, my one reason I can't get on UConn is it's really hard to, to win back-to-back national championships, and that kind of sticks in my head why I don't really want to go that route. But when you look at the – I was looking at this earlier. When you look at the fingerprint for UConn this year, and you compare it to last year, in some areas – UConn's even better than they were a season ago. I mean, when they're you're looking at field goal percentage right now, um, their tenth uh, adjusted field goal percentage on my site, they're tenth in the country. They finished twenty first last year. They're number one in offensive efficiency. They were number two last year. Um, they're making their mid range shots. That's not a shot. That's not a shot they were able to make last year. Um, a lot of the other stuff you look at it, and it's very similar. And if you say to yourself, if the numbers are similar and you saw the results in the NCAA tournament last year, why would the same thing not unfold again? It very well could. It's it's just one of those things for me where it's just hard for me to pick the champion two years in a row. I don't think the NCAA champion's been the same since, correct me if I'm wrong, Florida going back to, I want to say, 20 years ago. Um, that's the one thing that sticks in my head. But, you know, as far as winning the NCAA or the, the Big East tournament, obviously within grasp, um, I just like on the other side of the bracket, probably I'm looking at Creighton over Marquette just because Marquette doesn't have so much to play for, in my opinion. Yeah, and going back to that Providence, speaking of the Friars, for UConn over the weekend, great spot for Providence with I mean, they're going to need a deep Big East tournament run now, even though it's not like a situation where St. John's is on the bubble, probably on the right side of the bubble at this point, but mm-hmm. Big East tournament games are considered home games for them when it comes to net ratings and quad one, quad two, wins, losses, whatever it may be in the Big East tournament. But back to the UConn-Providence game for the weekend, Stefan, just to your point about talent level and what they're doing on both sides of the ball, Stefan Castle, 14 points, six boards, three assists, four steals. He's not mimicking Andre Jackson, and his two-way prowess because he's not as good of a passer, but it's close. He doesn't, the jump shot efficiency has to improve, especially in the half court for this team in the tournament. I'm curious to see how that goes, but he is elite in transition when it comes to his decision-making and getting to the basket. I think you could argue that Cam Spencer, this is going to, this may piss off UConn fans, but I think you, the case could be made that Spencer is a better fit for, and it's very close. It's like great and great times a little bit more. The difference between Spencer and Jordan Hawkins for me is right there for what they mean in, in Hurley's motion offense. And and the spacing is just so good. Caravan has also found his shot. My issue, if I wanted to take a dart here on one team and a team that started to peak, which has kind of been the trend that we've talked about ahead of conference tournaments when you're looking for maybe a little bit bigger Odds across any tournament. St. John's at 12 to 1 per bet MGM. Mm-hmm. The transition defense is still a huge liability for this team. 
despite winning five games in a row to end the regular season. They rank in the sixth percentile of percentage points allowed on fast break since February 21st, which was at the start of this five-game winning streak. So it's not like they fixed their biggest liability. A, they would get UConn in what? The semifinals if you can beat Seton Hall for the first time all season. And I hate the stupid crutch that, oh, you can't beat a team three times in a row. Well, how many times has it happened so far in some of these conference tournaments? Just look at Drake against Bradley in the MVC tournament. They've swept them for now, I think, their last four or five straight games. But the St. John's transition defense, even though I have Final Four futures on them, and by the way, I, I like Creighton. I have a title bet on them going back to the preseason I just I worry about depth with them too yeah absolutely um the other team I'm gonna throw out there that we might be forgetting about is Villanova in this tournament granted they've lost two in a row but look what they're facing in the first round they're playing DePaul they might as well be playing five guys down the street from my house then you're playing Marquette what we talked about which like we talked about with the injury with Kolek and and the, the motivational factor so I've always looked at it and said a lot of times with any tournament it really relies on the matchups to see what's going to happen. If you're going to have an easier path through two games, all of a sudden they might come in there just a little bit fresher into a semifinal game against a Creighton or against a Providence that sneaks through against Creighton. You never know. So I'm never I'm not a huge fan of Villanova this year. I've always kind of thought their ceiling is there, but they just have not just for whatever reason just haven't delivered. But considering the situation they find themselves in in this tournament, playing DePaul, playing Marquette, I think there's a path there that Villanova can actually surprise and actually get to the East, the Big East final. I don't know if they're going to take it all, but um, uh, if, if they go against UConn, that would be a tough ask. But still, I think there's a path for them ahead of them. Yeah, and you're betting on variance whether it's Villanova or Creighton, for that matter, come the NCAA tournament. See, that's why... I'm glad you brought up Villanova. That's why I don't necessarily like Creighton in this conference tournament is you're talking about the second shortest odds here. I, I kind of make my numbers kind of make this in line with the odds that are available right now for big East tournament and especially with the Jays. So whether they're on like they were against Villanova in the regular season finale, or you have an off night like they did against St. John's and, it's not like the Johnnies are playing Creighton in this tournament, to my point earlier, where you're getting that caulk Brenner drop coverage, which is where St. John's' offense lives for Patino in the mid-range with Jenkins and Dingle. But back to Creighton and Villanova for that matter. Villanova had a little bit longer odds, so that's why maybe if you want to take a dart on them. But an off night from shooting-wise with Creighton, and they're toast. Yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing is they rely so heavily on that three-point game. Um, but the fact of the matter is that's that they found a lot of success doing that last year as well. And, and that's the kind of thing that you bring in Steven Ashworth, who really just, again, plug and play perfect fit for the system. Um, 35th and three point attempt rate, 35th and adjusted three point percentage. They shoot the mid range. Well, although they avoid it as much as possible, eighth in the country in offensive efficiency. Um, obviously that's, that's always the downside with, with these teams, I still think you need to be able to shoot well. Obviously, those when you rely on the three point that three pointer that heavily, it is a little bit of a concern. You like to see a little bit of diversification, but at the same time, if they can do that reliably and they have proven they can, they can be a threat as they showed last year in the NCAA tournament. I want to go back to one matchup, potential matchup that you brought up with Villanova and Marquette in the quarters. So your site has it projected at. Marquette minus three, but just for clarification purposes for anybody that may go to your site and check out the odds versus what the market may be at, that doesn't incorporate the colic injury, correct? That is correct. Yeah. So my site just uses teams kind of as a quote unquote constant. It doesn't look at the individual parts. So people will ask that of me all the time and say, does this include the injury? And my answer is not proactively. And by I say not proactively, a lot of times Things get injuries do get cooked in because if a guy is missing for five or six games, those performances are being considered. So that gets brought into the the equation. But those proactive injuries, nothing is there. So this is why I always say take analytics with a grain of salt. Know exactly what you're looking at. Use them as evidence at a crime scene, but it's not an open and shut case. Use your eyes and make the adjustment accordingly. Right. And let's say the market is Villanova pick, which I don't think would it may surprise some yeah. of our audience, but I don't think it would be that crazy. Maybe Marquette minus one, mm-hmm. whatever the line may be. 
for anybody that's saying, okay, well, Marquette is minus three on Eric's side. Keep what Eric said in mind about it, it's across pretty much every analytic site, whether it's Haslam, Kempom, Torvik. None of these major analytic sites are diving back and adjusting their numbers for an injury. Think about how much time that would take too for you every night. Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, and that's the thing is like, what kind of injury are we talking about? There's so many different levels of injury. I mean, a mild ankle sprain, all of a sudden, if the guy wakes up and he's throwing up in the morning, how do you possibly (laughs) plug that in? You possibly, you can't possibly do it. So that's why I always kind of look from an analytics standpoint. There's, I've always said, and I've used to pin this to my site and I said, sports analytics should be like digging a grave. Six inches is not enough, but 600 feet is just plain overkill. I'm the kind of person who likes to dig six feet. There's other people who like to go 12, 18, 20 feet, whatever. There's a time where I think we dig too far and I look and go, I'm looking for the 98, 98% answer because the other two is there's so much unknown. You could dig all day long and you're probably not going to find it. These situations like day-to-day illnesses, things like that. Um, who knows what kind of bad day he woke up on the wrong side of the bed. That, that kind of thing happens to all of us. It happens to college kids. They're even more emotional than we are as adults. And that's just something that you just can't incorporate. They're intangibles. You can't put them in the metrics. If you want Eric to spend the rest of his life at his computer and adjust <laughs> his model every day for injuries, if we get a hundred comments on YouTube, Eric will do just that. I'm just kidding. I think, but remember if you want to find our bets throughout the conference tournaments, you can do so in the lines Discord channel link is over at the lines.com in the top right hand corner, Steven Andres and Derek Wagner will have bets for you throughout the week over there. 